provide the, the big picture from Agoric's point of view, uh, how it is that uh, Agoric got to the particular stance that we have with regard to the, uh, the layering of abstractions um, that, uh, that touch on all the things that we're talking about standardizing together, as well as many other things that are peculiar to Agoric. Um, so, so this is going to be um, uh, really very much uh, an Agoric-centric presentation, but for the purpose of orientation for our continued collaboration with the rest of this group. Uh, and the main thing is the layering of abstractions and how the ordering, not, a, not message ordering, but, but uh, 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 ordering of data types uh, uh, is layered through our system and what use we make of it. So I'm going to, um, so a lot of this for us started um, with the uh, following interesting use case. Uh, this is uh, extremely idiosyncratic to um, what Agoric is doing, um, but once again, useful for orientation so you know how we got to where we are. So over here, uh, this represents a concrete description of uh, an invitation to join a option, a covered call option, um, uh, as represented uh, in our system of digital assets, uh, ERTP, the Electronic Rights Transfer Protocol, on up, uh, none of which are going to um, uh, be explicit again in the rest of the talk. Um, but this is a concrete um, description of an individual option uh, when um, uh, Fred in this scenario is wants to uh, express what kind of option Fred wants such that someone can give him an option that he wants, uh, he might want to make a more generic expression of what he wants such that several different concrete options might satisfy it. And this is, this is a kind of issue that comes up not, not just for, for options, but for assets in general. That um, uh, rather than saying, specifically, I want this particular concrete asset, you might want to, to state something more general. So we introduce, um, uh, so in particular, uh, uh, these, the highlighted aspects here are too specific. Uh, so we've introduced a pattern language where Fred can express um, that he doesn't care what particular instance of the option contract he's interested in. That's why the M N E's here. Oh, um, uh, can people see my mouse move here? Yes. Okay. Yes. So over here, he yes. doesn't care. He puts the M dot N E to say uh, any any um, particular invitation and any particular instance of the covered call contract is fine as long as the 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 contract itself is uh, an instantiation of the this covered this this concrete covered call code, which is the installation, um, and then with regard to the underlying assets, the one that he's trying to get an option for, he might say um, instead of saying I want to buy at exactly three moolah, he's saying I want any amount of moolah that's greater than or equal to three. In other words, if you provide me more than the assets that I want, I'm fine with that, that's okay. Likewise, the strike price, the amount that I would have to pay to exercise the option, doesn't have to be exactly seven simoleons. Uh, if the strike price is less than seven simoleons, I'm fine with that too. So less than or equal to seven simoleons. And then the expiration date, rather than saying, exactly uh, time 100 on the foo time time base, the, the, whatever the, the foo time um, uh, clock, uh, notion of time is, uh, I'm okay uh, if, the if the expiration date is in that interval. So the important thing about, um, uh, about these patterns 
is that we'd like to, to uh, turn these patterns into queries against um, uh, large data stores. So we'd, we'd like to be able to turn them uh, into queries where we can efficiently look up the subset of, um, of options like this that an exchange might have that would match this particular query. Okay, so, um, so, so uh, the, the elements of this will come back uh, shortly. Oh, I'm sorry, and one additional thing is that instead of the, um, the greater than or equal to three mula, Three, the, the, when the things like you see a three mula or a seven simoleons, those are for fungible assets. Our system also has non-fungible and semi-fungible assets. And these, um, these inequalities, like greater than or equal to, apply to the non-fungible and semi-fungible assets. So, uh, and these invitations that you're seeing here are themselves non-fungible or semi-fungible assets. So the, so the underlying that you might be asking for is greater than or equal to of a description of a set where these uh, inequalities over sets are in terms of subset and superset. You're saying it has to include at, uh, at least the elements of this set, but any superset of this set is also perfectly acceptable as the underlying I would be purchasing. And the important thing about subsets or supersets of sets is that's a partial order. So these inequalities in general uh, can be partial orders over the underlying um, uh, data type that they're about. Okay. So the bottom layer uh, is of our system is represented by the package uh, with the package name endo slash pass style. So the, uh, the underline is the package name. And this is the taxonomy of passables. And this is really the core of what we've been negotiating and what I will continue to claim is really the only thing where we really need uh, a, a very, very strong notion of interoperability. We need these things to round trip robustly through our systems in order for us to get the interoperability of systems that we need. Um, but in order to motivate the particular choices that we've made here, uh, the orientation in this talk will show what we've built on top of it and how much interoperation we get with those higher layers is um, something that we should still explore. The more interoperation, the better, other things being equal. Um, uh, uh, but those are separate negotiations uh, from the negotiation that we're currently engaged in of interoperation at this level. So the, the next layer built on top of it is the endo slash Marshall package, which defines a concrete serialization of the passable data types into a serialized form that's useful for, um, for, for, uh, for transmission and reception across different systems. Um, uh, the uh, OCAP and data types, which correspond to this passable taxonomy, is abstractly uh, supposed to be language reasonably language independent, but with the um, the mild biases towards JavaScript that we've been talking about, there's some leakage like the um, like the two bottoms. Uh, likewise, the small caps here should be reasonably language independent as a concrete choice. Um, and the make Marshall is parameterized by uh, two functions, slot to val and val to slot, which is uh, 
with regard to the capability passing. Um, so built on top of Make Mar so Make Marshall is really focused on the serialized form for the data component of this passables taxonomy and is parameterized with regard to the capability component. And then the capability component um, is the, the, the CAPTP layer then makes use of Marshall uh, for all the C-list manipulation in order to do uh, OCAP messages, messages over OCAPs carrying OCAPs. And this is where a lot of the, um, you know, the, the other crucial thing that, um, that, that, um, that we need agreement on, that, uh, which is uh, interoperation at the level of capability messages and preserving capability security. This is where um, a lot of the progress that you guys have made that we have not on things like three-party handoff uh, come up at this layer. Uh, and so, um, so, so let, me, let me just do a, a correction, uh, which is the critical things we need interoperation on are the semantics of this and the semantics of this. Uh, and then the rest could be done by, uh, so for example, disagreement on concrete representation could be done by adapters if we need to. But um, uh, but we but in order to have um, a shared notion of capability security, we do still need uh, agreement on the abstract properties of of this. Uh, and I think nothing that I'm saying so far should be controversial. Okay. Now the some of the containers that we all want, like sets and maps, um, we postpone that to this patterns level because sets and maps require a notion of comparable equality for the keys of the maps or the elements of the set. In order for a set to have a cardinality, you have to know whether two elements in this, you know, the elements in the set have to all be different from each other by some well-defined notion of equality. Um, by postponing sets and maps to this pattern level, we also get to postpone uh, any strong stance of what is comparable equality to this level. Uh, at the passable level, the only containers are uh, arrays or sequences rather, or you know records or or, or structs, um, and the tag notion. That's all that occurs here. All of which are well defined without having to take a strong stance on uh, comparable equality for the other data types. Uh, so over here, the the. Um, we have a further taxonomy that's, that, um, that's given by our kind of um, uh, function. So, so the code font here are, are basically um, representing uh, the, the, uh, the APIs that represent the core concepts at each of these levels. So kind of and compare keys is, compare keys is the partial order that the patterns are using. And we have this capital M that you saw in the previous slide, which is the, the, um, the namespace for things like m.any or m dot greater than or equal to for expressing the patterns. And then a representational, so, um, so I'm, I'm about to get into the issue of representational tricks. And what I mean by representational tricks is many systems choose concrete representations that besides having the necessary properties of concretely representing the abstract semantics, they also um, uh, choose a concrete representation that has other nice properties. So for example, 
the IEEE floating point representation, the concrete representation, uh, if you flip the sign bit, it's order preserving. Uh, and that was not a necessary choice, but it was a very nice choice. So it makes a uh, comparison of uh, floating point values for ma magnitude comparison, uh, uh, able to reuse the ALU uh, comparison logic in a very direct manner. Uh, likewise, UTF-8 is order preserving for Unicode, CES U8, CES U8 is order preserving for UTF-16. So when, so given that, that there's many degrees of freedom in choosing a concrete representation, uh, if you can, uh, w within those degrees of freedom, without undue cost, make a choice that has nice algebraic properties with regard to higher level uh, pr properties, uh, then you get to sort of collapse um, uh, semantic apps issues in a pleasing manner. So another aspect of the Marshall package that's bundled into the Marshall package, but that really can be considered to be um, separate with regard to showing the layering of concepts, in which I would be receptive to actually breaking out as, as a separate package just to make the dependencies clear, is the Marshall package also defines this compare rank, which is a rank ordering over all of the passable data types. Uh, a rank order is a full order with ties. So whenever anybody talks about a sort algorithm being stable, uh, they're implicitly assuming that the comparison function for the sort algorithm is not just a full order, but a full order with ties, because if you can't have two different things tied for the full order, uh, then the notion of a stable sort is not a meaningful concept. So, for example, um, uh, um, uh, zero and minus zero, um, uh, uh, might be considered to be um, uh, tied in a full order. Um, Uh, uh, that's a, that was a, actually a terrible example. Um, okay, a great example is our remotables, our, our capabilities with identity, which, are, which we're going to be come back, coming back to. Um, we can't order capabilities in a permissionless system um, uh, because as the messages go through one C list after another, the concrete representation uh, in terms of C-list assignment changes, and abstractly, uh, to order capabilities created in different places in a permissionless system uh, would reveal information that is no one's business. Um, so we have to consider uh, all cap. So at the um, the compare keys level, the partial order where things are meaningful. We want to say that two uh, capabilities with identity, if they have the same identity, then the compares key says that they're the same, and otherwise that they're incomparable. Neither one is less than or greater than the other. So at the compare rank level, we say that all remotables, all capabilities with identity, are at the same rank, and therefore um, uh, sorting them will just put them, can, uh, put them all next to each other, uh, uh, separate from all of the other things that, that, that you're sorting. Um, and then a further representational trick that we use, oh, and, I'm sorry, and then the, 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 the representational trick is the invariance between the partial order key comparison, which is the one that's that has a semantics useful to the application programmer, like the inequalities, uh, the invariance between that and the rank order. The further representational trick is that 
Uh, one of the forms of serialization provided by the Marshall package is the ENCODE passable that Richard is working on, um, uh, which uh, serializes the passable types into strings, or, or rather into uh, byte strings, um, uh, in, an, in a um, rank order preserving manner. And that's, that's really a rather amazing representational trick. And this is why, if we can demonstrate, which, um, which we hope to next, next time we meet, that there's no unreasonable cost of this concrete encoding compared to other concrete binary encodings, then it's very nice that this is um, uh, uh, rank order preserving. Uh, as a choice of binary encoding. Um, then above this, uh, we have our uh, system of uh, defining defensible remotables, which are remotables protected by interfaces described with these patterns, uh, which is for defensibility, so that by using these declarative patterns, we can filter incoming messages according to essentially type-like constraints. But because these are, are dynamic, including things like inequalities, uh, these constraints can be somewhat more specific and uh, messages that are coming in that violate those type-like interface constraints can be rejected before they hit the, the, the raw methods being uh, of these remotables. So that's just nice to have. The main thing about these these exo abstractions is they're defined for virtu they're they're designed for virtualization, so that higher levels, which we'll see in a moment, can can implement these exo um, uh, object defining abstraction to define a large number of objects, in particular objects that spill out of the language heap onto other um, uh, data storage mechanisms that are outside of the language. And uh, likewise, we have our store package, um, uh, which is for mutable tables, things like map stores and set stores, um, which are, uh, and these are as well designed for virtualization. And the map store uh, is a mutable map in which the keys can be any anything classified by the patterns level as a key, and the values can be any passable value. Um, uh, and this again is desi designed for virtualization. And then uh, uh, outside of the endo um, repository in the... Did you, def did you define what virtualization is? Because you're yes. saying it repeatedly, I'm not sure what it means. Perfect, perfect segue for, for what LiveSlots does. So live slots, which is part of the swing set system, it's essentially the libc of the swing set kernel. The swing set kernel is the operating system uh, that we're running, um, uh, especially for on-chain computation, such that within the chain, it connects multiple VATs directly um, uh, uh, through the uh, CAPTP message passing semantics uh, if you're speaking, uh, when you're speaking to one VAT to another, the VATs themselves don't know whether the, count, the other VAT is on chain or elsewhere, which is why the compatibility of this with a, uh, uh, a, intersyst a distributed and intersystem uh, um, uh, protocol uh, is, a uh, cryptographic protocol is so important. But, but within the kernel, between VATs and the kernel, we just uh, connect with, um, uh, within the kernel without, without intra-chain uh, crypto protecting it, with, with more OS techniques protecting it. And the virtualization uh, is um, where you can have uh, a size of data that is a cardinality of data that exceeds what is reasonable to store in the language heap of most programming language implementations, and in particular uh, of the JavaScript implementations 
uh, that were running on chain and that were also running off chain on other platforms. So Endo runs uh, JavaScript, um, you know, runs on any standards conforming JavaScript. Um, uh, Swing set, which is doing the virtualization, specifically uses the XS JavaScript so that it can get the orthogonal persistence. But uh, part of our overall persistence is that uh, the high cardinality data, the high cardinality stores, the stores that are big, um, uh, we, we use the form of the store constructor given to us by live slots such that the actual storage can be on disk or on a database and paged in and as, you know, uh, basically as a, as a form of virtual memory paged into the language heap so that the programmer can use them just as if they are a store, a normal collection class in the heap, uh, as you would expect. And likewise, object in, uh, uh, um, instances of EXO classes, the total number of instances can vastly exceed what you can store in the language heap but from the point of view of the application programmer, they can use these just as if they are instances in the language heap and that they're uh, paged in and out transparently, uh, in both cases preserving the capabilities, uh, all the capability security properties. And uh, that also works with the virtualization of the C list management in the live slots implementation of the C lists for the live slots implementation of CAPTP so that the total number of exported instances can be larger than the size of a C list that you can keep in the language heap. So very concretely, I, th I think everybody here is probably familiar with the old make mint uh, example uh, from E going back um, forever, uh, the, our concrete implementation of ERTP in our system uh, uh, has um, the purses are virtualized, so you, the total number of purses implemented by a given mint can be huge because every account for a given currency uh, is a purse of that currency. Um, so there's some huge number of, potentially huge number of purses, and each one is separately exported through the C list of the VAT hosting uh, that particular issuer. Uh, so all of these need to be um, uh, transparently paged out, but without losing the uh, capability security nature of each individual purse is designated by a separate capability that can be separately remotely held. Um, uh, so that is our overall framework. Um, and um, uh, so that is, that's all by way of sort of motivating uh, um, uh, uh, the properties of how we layer on top of our passable taxonomy, uh, the patterns and keys, um, and in particular, uh, in order to support well the query according to these patterns that you saw, uh, the representational trick is we would like uh, pattern-based queries against these virtualized stores to be able to, via encode passable, turn into range, range queries of the strings that the keys of the map turn into, um, range queries on this that can be efficiently looked up where the range query gives you a cover, meaning that every th everything that would match the pattern is within the range um, uh, uh, according to the, to the, and that's where this 
the invariant between compare keys and compare ranks come in uh, is that um, uh, everything within the, the inequality interval uh, range is, is the cover uh, contains all of the candidates, uh, but then the candidates have to be further filtered to see if they actually match the pattern. But that's sort of the, the normal thing with any large data system is you have to have some kind of bounding box, some kind of cover to uh, efficiently get rid of the vast majority of things that are, that are known to be irrelevant, such that you can then afford to do a more expensive, expensive filtering of the remaining candidates. No, and I want to make one further point here. I'm sorry. The irritating thing about Keynote is if I back up, I then need to go forward to get to the last visual. Yeah, so a further point I want to make is I'm hopeful that all of these representational trick properties and ordering properties and all the rest, that a lot of what we've done here is also useful um, by for many other systems that aren't just using it for the purposes that Agoric is using it for, that the things that are general, generally useful representational tricks and ordering properties here, we've taken pains uh, to design them in very neutral ways. At this level, there's not yet any concept of ERTP or assets or or, or you know, fungible and non-fungible rights or invitations or, or any of that. Uh, at this level, it's still all defined in terms of, of, of very widely reusable concepts that I'm hoping you'll all see the utility of reusing. Okay, so, um, so you know, for, for our system, there's basically these three levels of abstraction where the kind of level is really the level at which the, um, we're doing most of our application programming, um, uh, where kind of is giving us a, a finer taxonomy than past style is giving us. The kind of is for the, um, the patterns level that we saw. The past style of is the past, is the past style level with compare rank coming from that, that Marshall ordering package. Okay, so to relate this to the OCAPN taxonomy that we've been negotiating on the uh, GitHub issues, uh, these are the current draft OCAPN names. These are the corresponding elements of the uh, pass style these, um, uh, so, uh, according to the past, the strings returned by pass style of, um, uh, this is the corresponding JavaScript type of, which if you're not a JavaScript programmer, you won't care about. Uh, these are just some notes with regard to how they map onto JavaScript. And I'll just mention some things. The TBD here is we don't have support for the byte string that we've all, but we've all agreed that the byte string, or whatever name, just a, a sequence of octets, uh, is go something we're going to support. And we also have yet to, de to decide what the string is for us and what the concrete JavaScript representation is. We've also filed an issue on the GitHub that precisely um, what the semantics of the agreed strings are uh, is not quite yet settled down, although um, except for this surrogate issue, I think we're in a bit, we're, we're, you know, we know what we want. Um, uh, float 64, I think we've all agreed only one zero and only one nan, or at least there hasn't been any controversy expressed about that. Uh, symbols, Agoric has a mess to be worked out that we've also filed a um, issue on, but I think we've all agreed about what the interoperation properties are here. Um, and then 
the OCAPN capabilities for us uh, uh, divide into the very distinct promise and remotable. And I'm going to take the opportunity of this three-part distinction for remotable to introduce the notion of pass invariant. Um, um, the, a lot of what's happening at both the pass style of level um, and, you know, the, the, and the patterns level, the, the kind of level, is to define concepts that are pass invariant. Uh, so that if um, uh, key k is key less than key b, uh, as, uh, as the keys are at one site, that if you pass the keys from here to another site, that the keys as they arrive at the other site when compared, uh, will have the same comparison. So if you take a far object, a local far object with methods, uh, and you pass it to a remote site, it arrives at the remote site as a remote presence. If you pass the remote presence back to the original originating site, it arrives as the far object. The JavaScript programmer will see these for several purposes as different things, but this difference between local and remote is not pass invariant. So the pass style of is only making a pass invariant classification. And for us, promises are pass invariant, but local promise versus remote promise is uh, also something that happens on passing, uh, but, the, the, but that difference is, again, not pass invariant, so for us, they're both classified as promises. And there's useful um, emergent classification, classification in terms of higher-level properties over these passable types that are transitive through the containers. So the containers form a containment tree. A, tr a containment tree that does not contain any remotables or promises is classified as just data. It has no authority. It has no unforgeable identity. Uh, anything that is transitively through con the containment tree, just these elements, uh, conveys only information. Okay, now, this is um, uh, where this notion of tagged comes in and where the layering comes in that explains why the tagged for us is um, uh, a abstraction that has very particular properties that might have been surprising, which I didn't even notice there was a surprise lurking there uh, until Ian asked his question on the GitHub thread, um, which is at the pass style of level, um, we have a JavaScript object which is recognized as a tagged, and the uh, OCAPN tagged, let me actually back up here, the OCAPN tagged uh, uh, corresponds to the, uh, to the um, pass style of tag, which is a particular JavaScript object we refer to as a tagged object. So at the pass style of level of abstraction, the tagged is completely uninterpreted. It's just uh, beyond being a JavaScript object that has a tag name and a payload. Uh, and it's left only to the higher layers, like the patterns layer, to interpret it. So the patterns layer, um, the, the kind of interpretation, then looks at the tag name and uh, makes a determination, is this a kind of tag that I understand? And to understand it, it has to have a tag name that, it's, that it knows to look for, uh, like the tag name copy set. But simply having the name is not adequate for it to be considered, for this tag to be classified by kind of as a copy set. In addition, the payload, the value um, associated with, uh, you know, portion of the tag has to obey 
the very precise invariance that this patterns level is looking for that needs to be obeyed for it to actually be a copy set. If it doesn't satisfy the invariance, then uh, even if it has the tag name copy set, it's, um, the resulting tag is considered to just be a tag, kind of just returns undefined rather than a string giving it a kind taxonomy. So in other, and the undefined means that it's not understood to have a kind. Uh, it's still something that we need to strongly interoperate on. The idea here is that different systems can interoperate even when they have um, they recognize different higher level data types uh, encoded into the tags when they don't understand each other's tagged encoding. So um, uh, if Alice, who understands, let's say, uh, the patterns and the, the keys and patterns encoding, the, co the coding according to our, the agoric kind of, um, uh, if it sees a tag that's understood as a copy set and it passes it to Bob, and Bob does not recognize uh, this higher level kind of um, encoding into the tag, Bob will still just treat it as an opaque tagged object, not understood to have a kind, but will preserve the representation such that if Bob then passes that on to Carol that does understand the kind of, the kind of interpretation of it is the, is the same as the, uh, as the interpretation that Alice had. Because these kind names is a shared namespace, and we all know the, sh the hazards of shared global namespaces, the coordination, uh, that's why we, take, we, we make the stringent requirement that it has to have not just the name, but the very precise invariants have to be satisfied. That could also happen accidentally, but if it does, then it will still be the case that we recognize it to be a copy set. Um, now, at this level, so over here, the, um, the uh, uh, collections, um, uh, the uh, OCAPN collections are divided into the containers which are copy set, copy bag, and copy map, uh, or the other things encoded into tag, which are... Um, uh, somebody, somebody has background noise, could you mute, please? Um, so the keys are defined over this classification um, uh, as uh, anything that's primitive data, or, um, or remotables, remotables have identity, so they're considered keys because they're comparable. Keys are the things that can be keys of maps or elements of sets or bags. Um, uh, and that's why the notion of key is so important. Uh, key is also the thing that you can do inequalities with, with compare keys. Uh, so they have the primitive datas or remotables at the leaves of the containment hierarchy, or uh, arrays, records, sets, bags, or maps as the internal nodes of the containment hierarchy. So anything that's transitive through the keys ending in just primitive data or remotables are considered to be keys. And then what the matchers are about is um, uh, anything, you know, the same kind of thing, anything that's a tree of containers in which the leaves are uh, primitive data, remotables, or matchers, where uh, matchers are these things like m.any. They're the things that we were, uh, or m dot greater than or equal to a given key. Uh, these are things that uh, a matcher is in also encoded into a tag. So we use the same tagged extension thing. Each matcher type, again, has a very, very particular invariance for it to be that particular matcher type, and each one has a tag name. Um, uh, and that's, that's, how, that's how we encode patterns. And the result is 
that our patterns are also passable, they're also passable by copy, and the matching of patterns over keys, um, including the inequality matching, is again defined to be pass invariant. So if a given key matches a given pattern at one site, then that pattern has passed to another site, and that key has matched to another site, will match at that other site if and only if it matches at the first site. And then this weird, um, uh, this weird- Mark, I'm just gonna let you know, yeah. by the way, that we are 15 minutes over the meeting time. Oof, oh my God, I am very sorry. Um, uh, this is actually just about my last slide. Um, so this is showing, um, the compare rank treats the tagged as opaque. It's doing a rank ordering of the tagged without understanding what the tagged encodes, and therefore is something that can be done at all sites, whether you understand the higher level meaning that's being recognized or not. Compare keys is defined only at this higher level. Uh, it's giving this um, uh, this inequality mapping, but it's encoding the key into the tagged in such a way as to preserve the invariance, such that the further encoding of the passable data type, including the tagged into the string by the encode passable, uh, again, preserves the inequality, allowing the efficient lookup by inequalities over compare keys. And so that's, that's where the interesting layering is. And, uh, uh, and I'm done. Thank you for indulging me. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. Thank you for giving it. Yeah. Um, I mean, we can, we can discuss any, the, the